Hello there and welcome back. In today's episode, I'm gonna to talk to you about how to care for a cast iron pan. I wanna show you some quick and simple ways that I make sure that my cast iron pan stays well cared for so I can use it now and for many years in the future. Thanks so much for being here. I'm really excited to talk to you about cast iron pan care because it's a question I've gotten a lot of. Now, first I should give you a caveat. I am not a cast iron fanatic. I love mine. It's on the counter all the time. It's a super awesome tool and I definitely talk to people about it all the time, but I am not a super geek about it. So if you are looking for a tutorial to update a cast iron pan that doesn't work anymore or has gotten rusty or that you found at a flea market or something like that, this is not the tutorial for you. This is for people who have a cast iron pan, think they might like using it, but it feels like a pain to take care of it. I'm gonna show you some simple, easy ways that you can take care of your cast iron pan without lots of work and tutorials and specificity and keep it working for a long, long time. So in today's episode, I'm gonna cover three things with you. The first is why you would wanna use cast iron in the first place. You may already be on board if you're here, but some of you might need some convincing. The second is how to care for your cast iron pan in terms of washing and those kinds of things. And then the third is um, how can you season your cast iron pan? So what do you need to do to keep it having that nonstick service? Let's get started. All right, so why a cast iron pan? I will show you my dirty one. I left this dirty just for you guys. You are welcome. Um, this is a Lodge Logic. I believe it's a 12 inch one. It's super heavy. It's actually like, I'm pretty strong, but like it's even hard to hold with one hand. So this might not be the right size for you, but this is like a, you know, less than $50 pan on Amazon and it lives on my stovetop. It is the only pan that lives on my stovetop. And the reason for that is that it's so versatile. So the things that I love about cast iron is it doesn't have any chemicals to make it nonstick. It's naturally nonstick based on the process that I'm going to show you here today and the pre-seasoning that Lodge Logic does before you get it. The second reason I love it is that it gets a really even heat. So because it is like this big, heavy, sturdy thing, it gets hot all over and it can get evenly hot on my stovetop, but it also can also go straight in the oven. And in fact, this is embarrassing. I'm going to show you guys. I need a new one of these. I have this extremely beat up silicone handle that slips right over the end here so that if you do put it in the oven, then you are not touching a hot handle, which is a mistake that all of us who cook have probably made before. Um, so the silicone handle is a nice touch for that. The final reason that I love cast iron, the final reason I love cast iron is because I personally have been anemic and I actually got advice from my doctor when I was pregnant that cooking in cast iron could be a great way to get some added iron in my food. I know those of you parents watching may have struggled with this with your kids. So cast iron can actually have a great nutritional benefit as well, which I always think is kind of a fun tip. So that's why I love cast iron. But the big barrier for most people is that it Things can stick to it. It can feel really overwhelming to clean. And if you have ever done a search on the internet, you'll get like a million different ways to clean a cast iron as well as a full on guilt trip around the things that you're probably doing or want to do with your cast iron that you shouldn't do. So first and foremost, um, cast iron loves to be dry. It doesn't love to be wet. So ways that you aren't going to clean a cast iron, you are not going to put it in your dishwasher. You're not gonna wash it and just put it somewhere to dry. The key things with cast iron is you want to do as little in terms of taking off the seasoning as possible. The seasoning is that coating that makes it naturally nonstick. And the second thing is that you want to dry it really well. So I'm going to move this video. You're not going to see my face for a minute. Sorry. Um, and I'm going to show you exactly what I do and what equipment I use. Okay, like first I'm gonna show you the equipment that I use. So this is a chain mail. It's made specifically for cleaning cast iron. This has been life-changing for me. I used to read uh, these books. Someone will know the mystery books that are set in San Francisco and the guy in it has a cast iron he loves and he only uses salt and no water to clean it. The cool thing about newer cast iron pans and well-seasoned cast iron pans is that they can take some water, but they ideally don't get a lot of soap on them. The soap is one of the things that takes off the seasoning. Now this may seem really scratchy. It's literally like what a chain mail on a night might feel like if you can imagine that. And, but it is really smooth. And so the cool thing is you can run this along your well-seasoned cast iron to take everything off of the pan and it's going to help you clean it up without the use of more abrasive things or things like soap. 
So the first key to cleaning a cast iron pan well is that you just want to use water and then ideally something like a chain mail. The second key is that you want to do it right after cooking. So I've been letting this sit for a couple days. It's not ideal, but like I said, I kept meaning to film this video. And so I left it there for you guys. So it doesn't work. I'm blaming it. Um, so let me now change the angle of the video so I can show you. Okay, now that we're set up in my somewhat clean sink, I'm gonna show you how I use the chain mail to wash this. Now, if you can do it without water, that's awesome, but this is not gonna fully work. So I'm just gonna show you what the scraping process looks like, and then I'm gonna show you putting some water on it as well. I'm just gonna pause there and say, you can kind of see the scratches happening, but it's all in that fatty coating. So you can see I have a nice smooth surface and I'm not getting any like flakes of metal off. That's a real key to using this chain mail and the reason that buying one specifically for this purpose is totally worth it. So let's add some water. And it doesn't need to be too much water, but now I'm gonna empty out the stuff that's in there. Give it another spread. have flakes of things in your pan is out of the scope of this video there's plenty of good resources online and you can um and you can search refinishing a cast iron but if yours is looking like this at this point you are in good shape and if it's not looking quite like this I still encourage you to move on to the next spot. So the mistake that most people make at this point is they let it dry like another pan or they try to dry it with a towel the problem with that is that cast iron well it has this nice seasoned coating, if you're doing it right, it doesn't um, take well to water. So it will rust if you let it just dry or if you think like, oh yeah, yeah, it's dry. And then you let that sit, then you're gonna start getting rust and that makes cleaning your cast iron pan harder. So the best defense is pre prevention in the case of the cast iron pan. So what we're gonna do now instead is I'm gonna move my cast iron pan and you over to my stove top. All right, so as you can see, the pan is fully dry now. That's a spot of oil right there. It's screaming hot. All the water drops have gone away, so I'm gonna pull that off the heat. And then I'm gonna bring it back up to me. Okay, so now that we're over here, I'm going to put a nice thin layer of this avocado oil on here. So I'm taking a relatively clean kitchen towel, putting some oil on. And then seriously, it's called this buffing, which I think is a nice way to think of it. So basically just spreading a thin coat, not getting too much anywhere getting a little and kind of spreading it around. You can go around the outside too. If you were seasoning it in the oven, you could do the bottom here, which like I said, I'm too lazy to do. Maybe you're in Team Lazy Camp or you just don't have time to care for a cast iron carefully. Don't let that stop you. So now that I have a nice thin layer of sheen, this is ready to go back on my stove top so that I can use it next time. I super appreciate you tuning into this cast iron care tutorial today. I hope it was helpful for you. Those of you who like me want to use a cast iron pan, but are a little bit befuddled by the details of what you actually need to do. If you like this content, I would super appreciate if you'd give me a thumbs up down below and then subscribe to my channel so that you can get more tips like this on a more than weekly basis um, and keep coming back to see more because I have lots of wisdom to share. Lots of wisdom I've won the hard way to share with you. So I'd be so appreciative if you subscribe to my channel. 